Hey guys, it's Matt Winning at winningstrength.com and today we're going to talk about a topic that I've wanted to hit on a long time and it's why linear periodization sucks. Now again, we're all fighting over similar stuff. My point is, is that if you're training and you like linear periodization, go ahead and do it. I'm just busting balls. But I will tell you that I think that there's a better way to train and let's get to it. So, with linear periodization, I think it's a very archaic way of learning how to train. I don't think that it has as much bad stuff as I would like to say it does. The only problem is, and I'm going to go over a couple key points and go on more about it on Patreon, but what I wanted to talk to you guys about is just some thought processes to think about. So in linear periodization, the first problem is when do you do max effort? That should be a big question because at the end of the day, a lot of people when you go up to and say you're at the mall, right? How much do you bench? Nobody cares what you can bench for 10. I mean, I think it's cool. Other lifters think it's cool, but most people measure things in 1RM. The problem is if you're training in linear periodization, you're probably only going to touch 1RM every 8 to 10 weeks. So you go 10, 8, 6, 4, 2, maybe a deload week and hit a single. Well, the problem with that is, is you're not touching max effort weights very often. That's what conjugate system figured out probably 75 years ago now, is the fact that if you want to be good at max effort work, you have to train max effort work. The problem with linear periodization is in a length of time, you're only going to touch singles once in every great while. That's going to be a big problem, especially with energy systems are concerned. The point is that if you're trying to be a good power lifter, an Olympic lifter, or a strength athlete, tens and such will not necessarily be as transferable as doing ones, twos, threes, and or fives. Tens are tending, tending to be a little bit more in the hypertrophy range and a little bit less in the strength range. So we have that as one major problem. The next big problem is if you look at linear periodization programming, it has no rate of force development. Most programs done with linear periodization have no speed work. Now, here's the thing. There is all this controversy on is speed work good for lifting? Should it even be in lifting? The answer is yes and no. The problem with most people that are not genetically gifted is they're not genetically powerful. So training to be more powerful has a couple of big scenarios that need to be thought of. One, if you can train rate of force development, when you go to strain, you're going to be able to beat weights faster. The point is, is that when you get super strong, you are eventually going to run out of time in which it takes to strain. So it only makes sense to get quicker to lift heavier. I think one of the biggest people that never really got world famous for talking about it other than in small lifting circles was Dr. Fred Hatfield. Dr. Fred Hatfield talked about compensatory acceleration and how important it was for him to squat over a thousand pounds at 242 body weight back in the early 80s in his 40s. Okay, and the reason he was able to do that, he was fast. Now, look at Shane Hammond's squat, dive bombing thousand pound squats. The point is, is that you have to get quick in order to get stronger and most people don't look at it that way. They look at it as if I just keep doing more reps, if I just keep focusing on more hypertrophy, I'm going to get stronger. Well, there's going to be a limit because of your contraction speed. And that's where it's very, very important to have speed work. But if you look at a linear periodization program, most of the times you will not see speed work at all. The third thing that I wanted to talk about and I find is very um, stressful and high mileage to linear periodization programs is that if we look at linear periodization programs as a whole, I would say you would see a very big lack of variety. Now, if you've watched any of my videos, you'll start to understand that variety is crucial for a couple of reasons. One, one of the biggest reasons most people get out of strength training or any kind of fitness endeavor is they get bored. Well, if you're switching and moving and changing exercises constantly, it's a lot harder to get bored. Two, what you also start to realize is that having less variety creates more mileage. So if you're bench pressing with a straight bar constantly, if you're squatting with a straight bar constantly, if you're deadlifting in the same position constantly, you're going to get a lot of muscle beat down and mileage in those particular points while others are hardly being used at all. 
conjugate system or lack of, of linear periodization tends to allow a little bit more of a rotation of movements, which is going to reduce mileage on the joints and soft tissue, but also help with psychological burnout. These are the major factors that I have found to be a huge problem in utilizing linear periodization. I think the real reason that we have a big problem letting linear periodization go is the fact that it works for beginners and intermediate lifters. So if I'm a 200 pound bencher, training linear periodization might get me to 300, might even get me to 350, poss possibly even 400 pounds. What I found is that after about a 440 raw bench that I was starting to get all kinds of shoulder issues, I was starting to get all kinds of mileage issues, and I was only 18 years old until I found conjugate training and started rotating my movements. This allowed harder training, higher percentages, higher intensities, and more stick to to the workouts because they were rotating constantly. So I hope this can help you and help me before it damaged my body. But if you find out and look around, really a lot of the guys that promote linear periodization have short careers. They might make it to a decent level and then they fall off very, very quickly. In my personal opinion, most of the guys that use linear periodization would have gotten a lot stronger using a smarter method in order to reduce the mileage and enhance psychological burnout and keep it from happening. So I hope this helps. We're going to shoot a little bit more of a detailed video on Patreon. So we hope to see you guys there where we're going to dive into this topic a little bit more and teach you the reasonings of why we train the way we train. Talk to you guys later. Lately I've been living like I can't take a loss. They want to help me, that's what made me a boss. You can't kill my confidence, I think I'm the man. We don't give a f that's what they don't understand. I'm back again like flu season, I broke records while loose leaf and I'm coming now my